This video will cover uh, trig integration. This will probably be the first of about two or three videos covering this section. Uh, this specific video will cover the fundamentals associated with trig integration. Um, and it is imperative that you know these fundamentals before continuing with the harder questions that they are definitely going to ask you in the AP Maths exam. So when we look at trig integration, it's important to understand this table which we use for differentiation, uh, well, which we have used for differentiation up until now. Um, it's important to note that moving from the left to the right hand side of the table is finding the derivative. And this table can be used in the opposite direction. So from the right hand side of the table back to the left hand side of the table, which is the integral. I won't go through all of them again. You can simply see, for example, the integral of cos x will be sin x um, and so forth. Then it's also important to understand some useful identities for um, trig integration because very often they'll give you a question that first requires you to, an, to apply an identity and then solve the integral. So these include sec squared theta is equal to 1 plus tan squared theta. Uh, cot theta is equal to 1 over tan theta, which is the same as cos theta over sine theta. Sec theta is equal to 1 over cos theta. Cosec theta is equal to 1 over sine theta. Cot squared x or cot squared theta is equal to cosec squared x minus 1. And then there are three rules, three or four rules associated with uh, multiplying uh, angles together. So if you have two signs uh, that are being multiplied together with different angles, you can apply the um, identity sine alpha multiplied by sine beta is equal to cos alpha minus beta minus by cos alpha plus beta, all divided by two, or you can just multiply it by a half. These identities um, are strictly AP identities. Not quite sure, I can't remember about the sixth one. You might see this in core, um, but very useful for AP trig integration. Then some more useful identities, which you'll know in core math, so I won't go through all of them. You can just uh, take them down. Just to explain the four special angles one, there are four of these. I've only included one, which is sine alpha plus beta is equal to sine alpha multiplied by cos beta plus cos alpha multiplied by sine beta and so forth. Now I will run through some uh, four examples which help understand trig integration. They will get progressively harder and note that in my next uh, one or two videos uh, in the future I will be going through some uh, really hard trig, exam trig integration examples which is most likely going to be the questions that they'll ask you in the exam. Anyway, the first question says, find the integral of cos 5x plus 1. And you know you, can, you need to find the integral. First of all, you see the integral sign as well as dx on the outside. So the first thing you need to do, and recall back to my introductory video on integration, uh, finding or deriving a trigonometric function requires the function multiplied by the, ang uh, the derivative of what's inside the bracket, so the derivative of the angle. So you simply compensate for this. So you put the effective derivative of the angle uh, multiplied by that trigonometric function, but then you have to compensate outside the integral with the 1 over 5, so that when you multiply it together, it has no effect um, and is no different to the original um, question given. And then what you do is you, if you've got the uh, derivative of the angle next to a trigonometric function in an integral, then you can just ignore that, simply change cos into sine, because if we go back to our table, if we're given a cos function, the integral of the cos function is moving right to left, so it'll then be a sine function. So then we'll just keep what's on the outside, so 1 over 5 multiplied by sine, same angle, so sine 5x um, plus 1 plus c, and I went through this in my introductory video to integration, it's important to include, to include that plus c, you can simplify that up to get sine 5x plus 1 over 5 plus c. Then my second example, which is also regarded as a very straightforward, uh, straightforward question, is find the integral of half um, 
sec 2x multiplied by tan 2x dx. Um, so what you need to do here is you can obviously see that the sec 2x and the tan 2x have the same angle, which is 2x. So you can simply apply the rule um, that you need to have the derivative of the angle next to the trigonometric function in order to do it um, very quickly. So the derivative of your 2x is 2. You obviously compensate outside the integral with the 1 over 2. So when you multiply them together, it has no effect on your original question. And then what you do is you would then pull out this additional 1 over 2, which was in the original question. 1 over 2, then you'll have 1 over 2 multiplied by 1 over 2 on the outside. So that'll be 1 over 4 multiplied by sec 2x. And as you can see, if you're given sec x times tan x or sec 2x times tan 2x, the integral of that moving from right to left is sec x. So then you'll simply say uh, sec 2x plus c. Clean that up, you get sec 2x over 4 plus c. Then these final two examples for this video will be slightly tougher um, as they will be involving one of the identities that I mentioned were important in the beginning of the video. If you're given a question such as find the integral of 5 tan squared 4 theta, uh, obviously d theta, not dx now because the angle is given in terms of theta. Then I apologize for the second line. There is no need for the second line. Um, I just had a different train of thought going and then thought back on it and it wasn't the best train of thought. So I decided to do it differently so you can ignore that second line. So then what I decided to do is keep the consonant, um, not the consonant, keep the constant um, on the outside. So the number 5 on the outside. Then change my tan squared 4 theta into sec squared 4 theta minus 1 using my identity and that identity can be manipulated using this formula. If I just take the one to the other side, then I'll have tan squared theta is equal to sec squared theta minus one. So I apply that rule and I have five open bracket sec squared four theta minus one. And then what I do, it's important to keep that five on the outside because now you have to multiply the five in. So you get five sec squared, the, uh, sec squared four theta minus five. Um, and then what you can do is, it's a bit like, I'm writing way too many steps. You can skip steps, pull that 5 out, and then have 6 squared 4 theta minus 1 d theta. Keep including your d thetas until you actually perform the integral. Then what you do is also this step, as soon as you become good at integration, you don't really need to include it. It's a waste of time, but it's just included to show you how I get to the answer. So I've got my 5 on the outside. Then what you're doing is you're basically splitting these two up because they split by a minus or a plus. You're splitting them up into two different integrals. So you'll have 5 um, integral uh, sec squared 4 theta d theta minus by 5. Now you have to include what's on the outside for both of these separate things. So I've got the 5 there for the sec squared 4 theta and the 5 here for the 1. And then all you do is for this one, it's a little bit tougher than this one. You have to have the derivative of the angle, so the angle is 4 theta, so the derivative of the angle is 4. You compensate with a 1 over 4 on the outside, and when you tidy that up, you'll get 5 tan 4 theta, because the integral of sec squared 4 theta is tan 4 theta, using that table from the beginning of the video, over 4, because you've got this 1 over 4 that you're multiplying everything by, minus by, and now we're moving on to this integral, um, 5 because that's on the outside multiplied by theta because if you recall for um, you or if you recall from my introductory um, integration video you simply just add one um, or add one to the angle so then instead of having one the integral of one will be theta plus by C then my fourth and final example for the video is slightly tougher this involves um, another form of identity. So if you're given 12 sine x multiplied by sine 5x dx, you should immediately be seeing that you have two sines next to each other and their angles are different. So the one has an angle of x and the one has an angle of 5x. So you must be thinking to use this um, identity, the half identity. So you take your constant out, you take the 12 out, 
you change the sine x multiplied by sine 5x into half uh, cos x minus 5x minus by cos x plus 5x using this identity over here. Um, please note that there is three more of them that you can simply Google. Um, and then once you've, you've changed that identity into that, keeping your dx in mind, you obviously take the half out again, so you have 12 multiplied by a half. Cos uh, minus 4x, that's just simply tidying up x minus 5x is minus 4x. Minus by cos 6x, x plus 5x is 6x, keeping your dx there. Then 12 multiplied by a half is obviously 6. And then using your uh, more trig rules, which you learn in core maths, cos of any negative angle can simply be cos uh, of the positive angle so cos min, uh, cos of negative 4x can be cos of 4x it's the same thing minus by cos of 6x sorry I had to insert the 6 because I forgot it um, and then same like we did in this example we split up the integrals although when you become better you can just do it straight so we have 6 cos 4x dx minus by 6 obviously bearing in mind same as the previous example keep your 6s outside of each integral not just the first integral so minus 6 cos 6x dx then you do each apply the integral to each one what's the derivative of the angle the angle is 4x so the derivative is 4 so then you would compensate outside with a 1 over 4 tidy uh, oh sorry and then integrating the second part uh, your derivative of your angle which is 6x is 6 so you'd compensate outside with a 1 over 6 and then you'd have 6 over 4, and then the integral of cos 4x is obviously sine 4x minus by 6 over 6, which is just 1, uh, sine 6x, because cos 6x, the integral of that is sine 6x plus by c. Then you can just tidy that up. Three, uh, The 6 over 4 goes to 3 over 2, so 3 sine 4x over 2 minus by sine 6x plus c. That concludes this video on trig integration. Uh, please note that I'll probably be making at least two more videos on this section, obviously covering harder examples. Thank you.